When leveraging data button, we're able to create an entire front end with all relevant things we would need in an effective landing page. In addition, we set up authentication that allows us to actually create real users with a real backend and allow them to sign up with Google. Therefore, a user comes to our website, hits continue with Google, and we can sign in. And the best part is that once they sign in, we now have the ability to access backend functions and use OpenAI's API endpoints to actually create value. And the idea we just created today is a software that allows us to get software ideas. Simply just providing this information over here and hitting generate ideas, which is a real backend function, we're able to get value here. Like you just saw in that example, in today's video, we're gonna learn how we can build out full stack applications using a no code tool like DataButton. What DataButton allows us to do is talk to a chatbot, provide some information, and we can build out a full stack app. Therefore, let's jump into today's video. Welcome back, y'all. Today's video is sponsored by DataButton. Their team had reached out to me, I demoed their platform a little bit, and I realized that they solve one thing that I don't really see with any other platform. There's a bunch of cool stuff about this platform, but the biggest one that stood out to me is this right here. Therefore, when you're creating your app and you run into errors and you're like, what the heck's going on? Using this platform, you have the ability to talk to a software engineer to guide you in the right direction. That in itself is a big selling point. At least personally, I think it is because of all the videos I've done in the past, when it comes to these topics, errors are gonna incur, issues will happen, and data buttons guarantee of basically allowing you to talk to a software engineer directly to help you with your application. Not only are you learning, but you're also building out the application. It's super cool. Knowing this, let's go and create our own application today. And it seems like a really big goal of data button is not only connecting like a nice looking front end, like this is a nice looking website, but also the other part of a software, which is the most fundamental part of a software, which is the back end, our ability to do functions, our ability to access stuff and provide value to our consumer. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to connect OpenAI's API to provide some value. Let's do it. Let's get started. Simply start with either email or Google. Once we're logged in, new app. The app we're going to create today is going to have three fundamental components. First one, we're going to have a homepage. This is going to allow the user to just arrive to our website and sign up for our software. Second part, authentication process. Each user that comes to our website is going to be authenticated, e.g. they can sign in and sign out. And then lastly, the fundamental part of every software is the value we provide. So the purpose of this software, which is going to be kind of funny, is to give you software ideas. Therefore, what we're going to do today is we're going to create a form where you put in ideas that you have or different components of things you wanna do within a software, and then we're gonna get an idea generator from an OpenAI API endpoint, or basically, we're gonna get artificial intelligence to tell us the best software idea to come up with. Therefore, let's jump in. What's the app name? I'm gonna go ahead, and this is gonna be a dog theme app. We're gonna call it Pup Pup. And Pup Pup is gonna be an amazing software application that tells us how to create other software applications and give us ideas for software applications. Therefore, the pitch is this will be an app that allows us to fill in a form and based on the form data, get ideas on software ideas we could do. We'll put in the app description, it will be a form data we fill in that then we analyze by OpenAI, which gives us ideas. Target audience, software startups. For the main screen size, we're gonna do desktop here, main theme, we'll do dark. If you don't know what theme means, that just means like the UI, e.g darker palette in the colors or lighter palette in the colors. Design guidelines, let's just throw something at it real quick. We'll say design it like a Spotify dark UI. Let's see what happens. And then as I discussed before, which makes this platform super cool, is we could schedule a meeting with an app expert. Don't really see this in the industry and the ability to talk to a software engineer directly while building your app is like education on tenfold. Generate starting points of AI. We are generating a full stack app. Let's do it. Okay, we're loading in. Let me go ahead and explain this interface a little bit so you get a little bit comfortable with it. First things first, based off that limited amount of information, we're already given a pretty good looking user interface here. Right now, this is designated as the home page, but we'll make this the off page or basically when a user logs in. But what you'll see here is that first off, we can see what the design looks like in different UIs or different devices is a better way to say it. So for example, in tablet, let me get out of the way. Tablet and mobile. This is gonna be needed in any type of web app. I personally don't like developing in mobile, but it's just, you need to do it, okay? <laughs> a lot of people be on their phones nowadays. Going back over to desktop here, if we go all the way to the left, this right here. First off, pages. This is gonna be any type of web page that you have on your website. Home page, sign in page, sign up page, terms of service, privacy policy, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Idea being that basically the home page is just the default URL. The sign up page would be like slash sign up. Next is UI components. These are going to be different components that you can create that can be used throughout your application. A uh, really good example of this would be like a newsletter CTA or you know when you go to a website or a blog and it has like that little like box that says like put in your email. We can make a reusable component that we can put throughout our website if we chose to do so. Next is backend, which is very important in software development. This is going to be where we can set up logic that we can access artificial intelligence with. And then finally, media public. 
internal storage, media public will use to show you some cool photos. I got some cool photos, y'all. Some photos of some dogs. Trust me. I was using Dolly to create these photos and just let me show you one, for example. Is it me or did Dolly and OpenAI like get an improvement? I was creating these images and I was like, these are actually pretty solid now. So we're going to be using a couple that I have. I'll show you how to do that, how to upload the images and use them throughout your website. Now that that is done, let's check out some other stuff here. Next thing, notice this is kind of like a local host 3000. If you don't know what that is, don't worry. That's just like a local development environment where I can actually put stuff in here and, you know, kind of mess around, which is cool. Next, you'll be able to actually look at, let's say the homepage, look at its specific code by going to edit code. Okay, pretty cool. You can go to history, which is nice here, which will be versions of the code that we push. So if we ever need to roll back to one, because we're like, whoa, 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 we messed up. We can do that. And then the big one here, the one that takes all the cake is our nice little chat here. This is what's going to develop our software here today. And I'm going to show you how we do it step by step. Therefore, now that you're comfortable with the user interface or what the heck's going on, let's do it. We shall proceed. So the first thing I want to do here is I'm going to add some images here of stuff I want to use throughout the website. So I'm going to come over here to this folder here and say add media. Simply select the media you want to add. With all my media added, let's check it out. We got a dog on a laptop. We got a dog for a profile picture. We got a dog for when we make a conversion on our software. We have a dog in vertical portrait. Next, we have a dog writing out a software idea on a whiteboard. Try to steal that code right here. <laughs> the way their credit system works is that you can have a ton of chats with this chatbot if you need more questions, understanding stuff, etc. You can do that. The only times it costs you a credit is when it does a code output. Let's start off here. Okay, looks great, but can we make home a new page for slash dashboard? That'll be the URL. And then let's create a new page for when a user first arrives, we will call it landing page. Now what's really cool here, and I'm gonna show you a nice little trick here, is that when you're referencing stuff over here, use this little hashtag thing. When I do hashtag here, I'm referencing home. Therefore, I'm gonna put that right there. I can delete that. And it knows I'm referencing the home up here. Let's start off here, let's hit enter. Now we're off to the races. The agent was able to understand the context of what I'm asking for, and it gave a pretty good suggestion here. So it's gonna create the new landing page. It's going to make it so that in order for us to have navigation, it's gonna create an app.tsx. This will make more sense. And then obviously we're gonna move this page to a dashboard. That all looks good to me. I'm gonna say yes, proceed. Enter. This is the new age of coding. You just talk or text, I guess. So once I did the steps outlined here, we are able to get our landing page, our dashboard. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna tell it to put the landing page code in the home page here. That's gonna be a lot more effective. In addition, as you'll see here from the last chat, it wants me to go ahead and just deploy this at their URL. So for now, we're just going to deploy it real quick and then we're gonna keep going here. Hit deploy. We're gonna do pup pup. This is another big feature by data button here is one click deployment. E.g. traditionally in software deployment, in order to deploy an application, you have to put lines of terminal commands to do so. Here, it's just one click. While that's doing that, let's go ahead and fix some stuff here. Oh, wait, it has actually deployed. Let's go ahead and check it out. Not bad so far. We're at a live website link. Let's go ahead and combine the landing page and actually put all that code into the home page. I'm gonna use the little hashtag tags. I'm gonna say, okay, hashtag landing page. Let's actually just put this code in the home page. Writing code. Super cool. It went ahead and did that for me. And what you'll notice is that when you make changes or big changes, it will ask you to redeploy the app. And that's just because so it reflects live on that website link we saw earlier. For now, though, we got our home page, we got our dashboard. I'm gonna go ahead and delete landing page because home page serves landing page now. So we don't need this anymore. Delete. Perfect. So currently how the application functions and they wrote all this copy. This has all been written by data button here is we have a nice little why choose pup pup AI powered targeted solutions, instant results, and a nice little CTA here as well. In addition, if I click this, it's actually linked to dashboard up to this point. Let's go to create a sign in page. So we have some authentication first before we do that though, it's called pup pup. So we need to see some dogs. I'm gonna say, okay, I like homepage to add better UI, let's go ahead and add these images. I did the little tag feature here, hashtag dog whiteboard, hashtag dog laptop. Remember, this is coming from my media here. Then I say, make the images have round corners and fit well, hit enter, and let's go. So we should expect some dogs to show up here. So this is super cool. This already looks super cool. One did a little mess up here, so let's go ahead and tell it that. It went in and told me that it added the dog of whiteboard as a transparent element. I'm gonna go ahead and change that though. So let's go ahead and do that. We're gonna say for dog whiteboard, I reference again with the tag feature, make it just so it's its own container, own element, so we can see the entire image at padding, you know, space around it, and choose around corners, and then let's put it above why choose pop up here, and then put it on home. What's very fundamental here is use that tag feature. Let it know exactly what you're referencing over here, here, for the best outputs. All right, let's go ahead and do a one click deploy, deploy app. This is so we can see the live reflections of our changes on that live website link. So while that's deploying, what's really cool y'all is the ability for responsiveness, right? So we can see what it looks like in tablet. 
Pretty cool. Mobile. Pretty solid. They also added a nice little hover effect here so it zooms in a little. That's cool. And we're looking pretty good here for Pup Pup. Once it deploys, you can see your live changes here. Click again, and we're officially on the Pup Pup website. Pretty good. Let's go ahead and set up a sign up method here. We're gonna go ahead and say, okay, let's create a sign up method. Let's just do Google. I want this on a new page called sign up. It's gonna lead to us creating a backend here. So we're gonna be using Firebase to do so. If you don't know what Firebase is, just think of it this way. This is our way of accessing the cloud. And on top of that, they have a free plan and they have a paid plan, but it's a pay as you go plan. In reality for most software development, at least in the beginning, basically everything's free. You get credits from Google. The free plan is like very, very, very generous when it comes to everything you can do with it. So for now, we're gonna be using Firebase. What you'll notice as well is that while it's writing the code, we can actually see live updates over here. Okay, let's get started here. So I went ahead and created a setup page, an author wrapper is gonna be able to give all the relevant credentials we need to give in order to do said things that we wanna do with sign up and authentication. And the first thing he's asking for is our Firebase project ID. So let's go ahead and create a Firebase project. Once you sign up with your account with Firebase, it is free, we're gonna hit create project. With this project, I'm just gonna name my data button, name yours, whatever you want. And then here you can actually enable Google Analytics for your project, that's cool. We are creating our Firebase project. So we actually have a backend for a no-code app. Once it's done, we hit continue. And here we go. We're gonna come up here to our settings. Project settings. So the first thing it's asking for is our project ID. So that is that right here. All right, we're gonna hit that and hit send. Next is asking for all the relevant information with the API key, off domain, project ID. Don't worry, that's easy to find. We're already in our settings, so all we gotta do is scroll down. And that will be found right here. So let's go set it up. We're gonna click this button right here. This means web app. I'm gonna give it the exact same name. Register app. This is gonna be blurred out for obvious reasons, but all you need to do is simply go to the const here that says Firebase config and copy all of it. Just this part though, y'all. Just the Firebase config. Don't copy all of the code like this little button right here. Just this part right here. Once you do that, just paste it right there and hit enter. So once we do that, we'll get a message like that. Let's just go ahead and just deploy this app as well. The next thing we're gonna need to do is in our Firebase project, we're gonna need to enable authentication. To do so, we're gonna go to build here, hit authentication. Now I already enabled it, but you're simply just gonna hit get started. Once you hit get started, come into sign in method. Now in today's video, we're just gonna be setting up Google because Google's fast, Google's nice, and everyone loves Google. Hit Google, hit enable, provide a support email. This will be associated with your account. Hit save. Once you see that, you're good to go. Now let's go ahead and add functionality to continue with Google. I'm gonna go ahead and reference the sign up page. Okay, make it so when I sign up, I can sign in with my Google account. I have enabled authentication in Firebase Google sign in. As a side note, sometimes the code output would fail, but don't worry, the agent just keeps going at it until it succeeds. So we're gonna deploy this app as this is pretty fundamental, deploy app. Once it's deployed, there is one major thing you need to do to make sure that it works. Come to your application, obviously, this is the application pup pup. Go to your URL up here and just copy it. Then coming back to Firebase here in authentication, go to settings, go to authorized domains. We basically need to tell Firebase in our backend like, hey, we own this. So to do so, it's gonna hit add domain, paste it, and then hit add. Once you do that, everything should work fine. Continue with Google. We can create an account with Google. Looking good so far. Let's go ahead and add some more logic here. First piece of logic I wanna add. I wanna make it so that all the get started, get started, come down here, start generating ideas. This is gonna be attached to the URL of the signup page rather than the dashboard. E.g., when I hit this, I shouldn't be going here. I should be going to the signup page. So let's do that. I'm gonna simply put in, okay, on the home page, make it so that all the buttons send us to the signup page, enter. And then lucky for us, we can real quickly test this. So get started, sign up page, come down here, sign up page. Okay, we're looking good here. Now coming over to the sign up page, it looks a little blank. I don't like that. Let's add another dog. We have some dog photos. Go ahead and use this photo right here on the sign up page. Now when writing this prompt, I wanna reference something specifically in the page, e.g. this little brain. So I'm gonna hit edit code. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna scroll down here. And I notice that it's right here, it's brain. I don't like that. I wanna replace brain with my new image. So I'm gonna copy that. And in my prompt here, I'm just gonna say, and replace it with then the line of code. And then we have this. Okay, on the sign up page, use the tag feature, add this photo, reference the photo, make it a circle, max width of 250 pixels, and give it a border with a shadow, and then put the line of code. Don't worry, the AI gets that. I'm gonna enter here and notice how, this is also all layman terms, so push it to the limits. Whatever you want the image to look like, see if it can do it. Sign up for Pup Pup. Looking pretty good here. This is exactly what I wanted. Next piece of logic we need to add here is that Basically, when I sign in, let's go ahead and arrive at our dashboard. Okay, now let's have it when I sign in with Google, we are directed to the dashboard page. Hit enter. There we go. Let's go ahead and deploy this. Deploy app. And this right here is what I was referencing earlier in the video, where you can talk to a software engineer directly for any help you need. So you run into issues, errors, problems. You got a little chat bubble right there, and you can talk to Martin. 
Let's talk to Martin. When you deploy your app, you're gonna need to do like a little bit of a refresh on the page. So it shows, continue with Google. And we've officially logged in. Now onto stage two here. We've successfully created a front end that has authentication and we can deploy this to a live website link. The next question, and one side note real quick. If you're like, Corbin, I don't like that website link. I don't like it. Don't worry, just hit deploy. You can add your own custom demo main right there. Now back to what I was saying. Let's go to connect this to an AI provider like OpenAI, put information there, and actually get an output there. Because it's time for PubPub to tell us some good ideas. Let's start off with the basics here. Okay, I wanna connect my OpenAI API key. An API key in this context gives us the ability to access artificial intelligence in the cloud. Hit enter. Therefore, to get started here, make sure you go to openai.com. Just type in OpenAI API dashboard. Sign up with an account. It's free. Let's grab our key. Simply go to that link right there and just hit create key. With your key created, simply paste it. Hit send. Perfect. Once you see that, we're good to go. Therefore, once we have the key, all good to go, we're going to say, okay, for dashboard, this right here. Have it for the form. I can input the requested data. And when I hit generate ideas, e.g. I'm referencing this button right here, we use our open API key to do a check completion of software ideas based on this. And the ideas show up in generate ideas section. Let's push it to the limits. Hit enter. While this is generating, I want to let you know about one other cool thing about DataButton is that their backend is fully Python. They have a fast API system where any type of Python packages you could possibly install in here work really well. That's kind of why I like DataButton, as not only can we get nice little front ends and UIs, but also have a pretty scalable backend. Let's let it keep generating. Once it's all done, let's go and deploy it. Now that it's deployed, let's test it out. I'm going to go ahead and input industry, finance, target audience, small business, Problem statement, PNL business sheets take too long to read. No one wants to read them. Key feature is using AI to analyze and give a summary of what we can do. And with all that done, generate ideas. We are generating ideas. And they should show up over here. And here's a result. Finance GBT, an AI-powered PNL analysis assistant. Key features, AI-powered PNL statement analysis, automated financial health indicators and trend detection, real-time alerts for significant financial changes, potential impact, dramatically reduce the time span on analyzing PNL statements while improving financial decisions, making accuracy. Looking pretty good, y'all. When leveraging data button, we're able to create an entire front end with all relevant things we would need in an effective landing page. In addition, we set up authentication that allows us to actually create real users with a real backend and allow them to sign up with Google. Therefore, a user comes to our website, hits continue with Google, and we can sign in. And the best part is that once they sign in, we now have the ability to access backend functions and use OpenAI's API endpoints to actually create value. And the idea we just created today is a software that allows us to get software ideas. Simply just providing this information over here and hitting generate ideas, which is a real backend function, we're able to get value here, all generated by our own artificial intelligence provided by OpenAI. If you feel like you learned something in today's video, make sure you like, it's completely free, or leave it for the dog. The best part about data button is that if you ever run into issues, you're like, Corbin, I got an error. Don't worry, talk to that little chat bubble we saw earlier and get some help. Without further ado though, I'll see you in the next video. We just created a full stack app. Why choose Pup Pup? Pup Pup, two random videos. That's my face. I'll see you in the next video.